Clock, can you say again? Let's go. Eva, let's go. Very good. Okay, let's go. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. July 9, 2020. It's a Thursday morning. And this is our usual after breakfast gospel commentary in the Cleochco household. So we would like to welcome everybody who might be uh, watching with us live and those of you who uh, come on uh, later. So we do this gospel commentaries every morning with, our, with my family um, just, to, um, just to appraise those of you who um, might have come to this uh, broadcast only uh, now. Um, this has been a habit that we do in the house every morning, uh, or at least one weekend, where we uh, read and comment on the gospel uh, for the day, the gospel of the mass for the day. This is the way that I try and uh, teach my own children about the Catholic faith, and it's uh, something I'd recommend to everybody, all parents could find the time to uh, do this with your own children at home to explain the meaning of the gospel, okay? So, um, so let's begin. Today is July 9th, and the gospel for today comes from St. Matthew, chapter 10, verses 7 to 15. This is the, the gospel where we are told about how Jesus sent his apostles to proclaim the kingdom of heaven. He says, as you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Without cost, you received. Without cost, you are to give. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts, no snack for your journey, or a second tunic or sandals or walking stick. The laborer, deserves his keep. Okay, let's stop there. Uh, the rest of the gospel, we can hear it from the Mass when we go later. But I'd like to comment here on that line where our Lord says, without cost you have received. Yes. <laughs> without cost you have received. Without cost you are to give. What does our Lord mean by that? Without cost you have received in other words in other words yes <laughs> baby Ava is calling my attention okay what our Lord wants to remind the Apostles here is this right the message of the kingdom of God being at hand all the teaching and the the uh, wealth of doctrinal formation that the apostles received from the mouth of our Lord himself, okay? and all the graces and gifts that God has given them has all been bequeathed to them freely, without cost. Right? There's no cost to, to go to heaven except for our own effort and our own sincerity to live by the teachings of our Lord. And to be free of sin, right? So, otherwise the heaven, heaven is there for our own inheritance. And therefore the teaching of people about how to get to heaven should come to them at no cost. Eh? Should come to them at no cost. It's, yes, honey. Okay. You don't, don't disturb Papa. Papa's teaching you now. Okay? Good girl. So, and our Lord reminds the apostles, I gave all of these things to you for free, right? I want you to do your turn to go out and proclaim the kingdom of God freely, without cost to anybody, okay? But there is, a, a, there is another underlying meaning to this phrase, which we find in the gospel today. And the meaning behind this is... Our Lord's teaching on the virtue of generosity. Generosity. Our Lord wants the apostles to understand and wants all of us to understand that, that there is virtue in giving freely 
and generously. What does generosity mean? What does generosity mean? Can we, can we review this a little bit? Do we understand what generosity means? What do you think is generosity? <clears throat> hmm? I think Ava is the only one answering my question with her songs. Huh? Sorry, Sophia? Give to give freely without conditions. Yes, that is a very nice definition. To give freely without conditions. Yep, good. Good, and to that I will add, to give freely until it hurts. Okay? Until we feel the pinch. Until we are uncomfortable about giving. That is the true test of generosity. Because a lot of people give out of their excess. They give out of their own abundance. Okay? And therefore they don't feel much of a pain. By having to give because, ah, I got plenty of that. I'll give you some. I'll spare you some. Okay? That is really not generosity. Okay? It, may be, it may be kindness. It may be some, some uh, good gesture to some other people. But it does, not, it does not pass the test of generosity. Because generosity is the virtue that entails giving until it hurts. Giving without conditions, as Sophia said, and giving without counting the cost of how much we have given. As our Lord said, freely you have received, freely give. Okay? That is the mark and the test of generosity. Now, how do we express the virtue of generosity? Where, where, and how uh, do we express the virtue of generosity? Many times people, and uh, people would, would associate generosity to giving alms, tithing, okay? giving money, donating things to others. Yeah, that's a good way. That is a good way of being generous. It's to give financial help, material help to other people. But there is another dimension of generosity that many times we overlook. And what is that? The generosity of service. The generosity of service. Like you kids, you don't have your own money yet that you can spare and you can give to others to help others, right? But there is something you are wealthy about. There is something you are rich in which you can actually give to others. What is, what is that? One would be your service. Okay? It would be your service. You can, you can give of yourself to others. You can help other people, your own siblings, in the household. You can give of yourself in terms of how you serve the others. Okay? You can help your siblings with chores. You can help your siblings with their studies. You can help your siblings with the projects that, uh, that they do and that you do together. Right? You can give of your time. You can give your attention. Okay? So there are many things that you can give of yourself to others. And it doesn't necessarily always mean money or material giving. And there's one other thing you can be generous in. Starts with a P. Huh? What's that, Joe? Prayer. prayer. Very good. Prayer. You can be generous with prayer. Generous with praying for others. Generous with praying for the needs of others, whether they be spiritual needs or material needs. Right? Just like when we pray the rosary, we, we, we recall several intentions of people that we pray for. Hey, we can do the same thing with the masses that we attend. And we can do many more extra kinds of prayers that many times people don't think about. For example, you can pray extra rosaries on the road when you make road trips. Or even if it was a quick trip from, uh, from your home to the grocery store, you can pray one extra part of the rosary. Okay? That is an extra prayer that, that you can offer for the needs of people around you. Okay? 
I myself have have this uh, practice that uh, you you will already notice me doing that when I'm on my treadmill or on the on the bike, right? <laughs> what do I do instead of having a headphone to listen to music or uh, or watch uh, movies? which I will do sometimes, but uh, many other times I would have my rosary on my hand, right? Praying extra rosaries while I am uh, doing my exercise or on the treadmill so that I can pray for other people. I can pray for other people's intentions, okay? So that's generosity. We can be generous with money, with material things. We can also be generous with our time, with our effort to help other people through our service we can be generous with our prayers okay and and we can be generous with our smile okay we can be generous with our smile you know why because god loves a cheerful giver okay god loves a cheerful giver so he also wants us that in, uh, to express our joy with generosity. We don't try to give and help other people with a long face. <laughs> While we help people, we are complaining and we, uh, we drag our feet because we don't like it. Well, that's not being generous. See? To be generous means to give until it's painful, to give until it hurts, to give until we feel the pinch. Okay, to, feel, to give until it is uncomfortable for us to give, that is generosity. But giving in such a manner that we smile at the same time. Because we're doing it out of joy, we're doing it out of love, we're doing it out of a sincere concern for the welfare of others. That is the virtue of generosity. Okay, and that is what makes it a virtue. It is not the giving part that makes generosity a virtue. What makes it a virtue is the pinch, the discomfort, and the smile, the joy that comes from giving. That is what makes this act of giving a virtue. Otherwise, without those three components, it just becomes another chore. Okay? And it is not nice that way. Okay, everybody, that's it for us. Have a good day. And remember to be generous and smile. Bye. bye, -bye. Hi, Eva. Say bye-bye, Eva. Eva. Eva, say bye. Will you say bye? Uh-oh. Say bye, Eva, there. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, everybody. Bye.